Howdy doody everybody, my name is Kev Gooey and welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club. I bet Saria and the Shodan run out into the hallway. I locate the nearest vending machine. What should I get? It doesn't really matter since it will be used as an ice pack rather than to drink. But I know Saria likes apple juice so I purchased that one. In just a moment I'm already re returning to the classroom where I left Sayori. She has one palm on her forehead and is using the other hand to clumsily scoop crayons back into the box. What? It's only like, it's only three, four that came out. At least they were already in the wrong spots before I spilled them. Sayori here. I hand Sayori the bottle of apple juice. It's nice and cold. Sayori opens the cab and starts drinking from it. Sayori, what are you doing? It's for your forehead, idiot. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Oh man, I just realized that it's on her- <laughs> it's actually on her forehead now. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot. Ha 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 ha. How hard did you hit your head? Sorry, he places the bottle against the bump on her head. It stings. Just bear with it, it'll feel better soon. Yeah, it'll feel better. Looks like you cleaned up most of the crayons, so that's good. Hey, Cab Gooey. Yes? This kind of reminds you of gro you of growing up, doesn't it? Eh? What do you mean? You know how we used to play outside all the time. I always would I always would always try to keep up with you. You were kind of oblivious in some ways. Like I usually fell behind or had trouble climbing on the things you did. But sometimes when I tried to do things I couldn't, I would get myself hurt. I'd fall and scream myself or get a bump, and I would start crying really loud. Ha ha ha. And you would rush over as quick as you could. You would try really hard to get me to stop crying. It was almost like you blamed yourself and were afraid of getting in trouble if someone find out. Even though it really wasn't your fault at all, you know. Did I really do that? Yeah, you don't remember? Come to think of it, maybe I do remember a bit. I guess I was always so focused on my games that I didn't pay enough attention to you. So in a way it was my fault. Kinda like this time too. If I wasn't rushing you out of the closet, you probably wouldn't have hit your head. Ab Gooey. I don't think you realize it, but you're always thinking about other people. Even after all these years, you're rushing to help me even though I'm just being clumsy. You're really a sweetheart. But don't call me that. I don't really do this kind of thing all the time. I guess when it comes to you, it just feels natural. Before I even know I'm treating you like that. I guess that's what happens when you've been friends for so long. Really? Maybe you're right. Have Gooey. I'm so glad that nothing's changed between us. Do you think it'll be like this forever? Forever? If I'm honest to myself, there's no telling where we'll each end up for college or after that. So it wouldn't be fair to me to make any promises. But... Well, I hope so. It's been this long already, right? I can't imagine you ever changing, so my hopes are up. I'm so happy. Sayori has a whimsical expression in her eyes. We remain silent for a moment. She's so silly and clumsy on the outside that when I see her deep in thought like this, it makes me not want to disturb her. I guess we should go back. I don't want to worry Monica, you know. Good luck with that. She's gonna see your forehead either way. Not if I hide it under my bangs. Sayori hops to her feet. Ah! She clutches her forehead again. Don't stand up so fast after hurting yourself. Well, I guess it's too late now. Anyway, let's go. I follow Sayori out of the classroom. Sayori plays with her bangs to try to hide the bump, but without much success. In a moment, we make it back to the club room. Classroom. Ah, you're back. Your timing, I was just about ready to start with sharing our poems. Yes, Sayori, your forehead. She's fine, don't worry about... I was playing with the crayons and smacked my forehead into the shelf. Well, anyway, were you able to find everything we needed? Uh huh, I have it right. Eh? Sari frantically glances around herself. I forgot all of this stuff. Calm down, Sari. I have it all right here. I found the poster paper too. Ah ha ha. Aww. Look at her. Sounds like you ended up doing all the work, Cap Gooey. Ah, uh, well, Sayori failed to come up with an excuse for Sayori. I made it an adventure. Yeah, that. Ah, uh, okay, okay. 
In any case, good work. I'll start working on the posters tonight. Me too. Okay, everyone. Are you ready to share your poems? Yes, I should grab mine. After making sure the crayon box is tightly closed, I return to my seat. Who should I show my poem to first? I don't know if it really matters or not. I think it's about... Hmm. Well, I'm going to do the same order as before. Hi, Yen Kagui. How's the writing going? Alright, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad. I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. Ah ha ha, I wouldn't count on that. You never know. Want to share what you wrote for today? Sure, here you go. I give my poem to Monica. Alright, pretty good. It makes me think of Sayuri like the other one that you wrote. Aww. You two are like the dynamic duo. Ah ha ha, that's kind of exaggerating it. Yeah, probably. But you do spend a lot of time with her even in this club, don't you? Then again, I don't blame you for being a little shy. I, I'm not shy, it's just... Ah ha ha, I'm just teasing. I know it takes a bit of time to make friends with everyone. But Yuri and Natsuki are super interesting people, so don't be afraid to give them their share of time. And you can talk to me every now and then too. I'm not like, unapproachable or anything, am I? Ah, no, it's nothing like that. I'm just still getting used to being here, that's all. Yeah, I'm sorry if I was putting pressure on you or something. I really didn't mean it like that. Oh, don't worry. I get what you're saying. Well, alright. But anyway, do you want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Alright, let's take a look. Save me. The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors, flashing, expanding, piercing, red, green, blue, an endless cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise, they won't stop, violent, grating waveforms, squeaking, screeching, piercing, sine, cosine, tangent, like playing a chalkboard on a turntable, like playing a vino on a pizza crust, an endless poem of meaningless. Load me. Hmm. Even more abstract than your last one, huh? Ha ha ha. I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. Oh, I never said that. It's the kind of thing I've never really seen before, I guess. I kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Using where and how to speak your words can totally change the mood of the poem. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what's it about though. Ha ha ha. Sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be as abstract as a physical expression of a feeling. Or a conversation with the reader. But putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. What, what's happening? Is she breaking the fourth wall or something? It's... What? Are these actual tips for us or the player? I mean, the, the person in the game. Never know when you might change your mind. Well. Oh well. Or when something unexpected may happen. Wait, is this tip even about writing? What am I even talking about? Ha ha ha. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Huh, I feel like something's gonna happen later on down this line. I, I have no idea what, but something. Alright, Sayori, it's up to you. Hmm. Yeah, Gooey. I really love your poems. I can't believe you've been hitting these for hiding these from me. Eh, I'm not hiding anything. But your poems are so good. Yesterday's and this one too. You can't tell me you haven't done this before. I mean, you're really the only one who feels that way, so. Eh? No way! Not even Natsuki? Well, I guess Natsuki is the least likely to admit how much he likes something. But I don't think it's that. What do you mean? Well, I guess I'll be honest about it. It's a lot easier to write poems when I'm thinking about you. What? I'm just choosing the words that I think, you know, 
Nice. Hey, hey. Wah, 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 wah. Stop thinking weird things, idiot. I just mean that you're a really expressive person, I guess. How am I supposed to write poems about my own stupid life? But you somehow make everything in your life an adventure. Even the little things. Like cooking. Let's not talk about that. Hee hee hee. So yeah. I guess what I'm saying is that I can feel more feeling I can feel more feelings through you than I can through myself. We have that kind of weird connection. It's your fault for getting in my business all the time. Eh? I don't know if I understand. Uh never understand when I try to explain things to you, do you, Sayori? I bet Sayori's head. Ah ha ha hey! Not a kid, you know. Are you sure about that? Hmm, maybe. Sorry, he starts fiddling with her pencil between her hands. Hey, Kev Gooey. Will you give me your poem? I kind of want to keep it. Huh? Oh, why? Because, well, it's the first time you've written something for me. Hee hee hee. Ugh. Sorry, you completely misunderstood. I didn't write this for you. Eh hee 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 hee. Ugh. Are you even listening anymore? Well, whatever. I'll give it to you when we go home. Really? Snap. Ah! I broke my pencil! Sorry hastily bends down to pick up the pieces she dropped. But being an inattentive of her surroundings, she bumps right into me. So sorry! It's fine, it's fine. I'll get it for you. I bend down and pick up the broken pencil. Sorry clutches the desk beside her to support herself, knees shaking. Uh, I'm a little clumsy today. Ah ha 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 ha. Let's sit down, Sayori. Yeah. I grab Sayori's arm and help her sit at the desk. Anyway, I still haven't read your poem. Oh, sorry, I forgot about that. But it's not as good as yours. Jeez, don't worry. I'm sure I'll like it. Whoa. The uh, longer than before. Bottles. I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. It's a secret place where I keep all of my dreams. Little bells of sunshine all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly, but there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe. And I put the bottle on the shelf with all of the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and bottles all in a row. My collection makes me lots of friends. Each bottle of starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friend feels a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night more dreams. Friend after friend more bottles. Deeper and deeper my fingers go. Like exploring a dark cave. Discovering the secrets hiding in the nooks and crannies. Digging and digging. Scraping and scraping. I blow off dust. I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends. Look through my locked front door. Finally, all done. I open up and in come my friends. In they come in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frantically, I frantically pull them from the shelf one after the other. Holding them out to each and every friend. Each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters up against the tile between my feet. Happy thought, happy thoughts, happy thoughts in shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends. My friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, something. But all I hear is echo, 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 echo. Inside my head. Wow. That was deep. Holy crap. Yep, exactly. I'm going to end the episode here, everybody. We'll find out what, what uh, we're going to say to her in the next episode. So if you guys enjoyed this episode, then please slime that like button and subscribe down below for more awesome videos. Thank you everybody for watching this episode and you will hear me in the next one. Goodbye!